He'll outlet it to Phyllis on the far side. Wing to McEwen, top of the three, lets it fly, and he knocks it down. Gets it over to Phyllis. Phyllis takes a quick jumper as he takes the catch, can't get it. Hughes is there for the rebound for Otterbein, and he's there for the putback right of the rim. And it's intercepted away by Chase Moyer that time, who picked his back pocket. Moyer with a no-look bounce pass to McKenzie on the right side of the rim, and McKenzie gets it to fall. Fakes a pass, now he penetrates towards the basket, kicks it out free throw line, three on the way from the corner for Chase Moyer, and he's able to knock it down. From the studios of 33 College View, it's time for the Todd Adrian Coaches Show here on WOBN 97.5. Here is your host, David Kinder. Good afternoon, and we welcome you into the Todd Adrian Coaches Show here from the studios of 33 College View. I'm your host, David Kinder. We have a great show for you today. Joining me in studio, head basketball coach Todd Adrian and honor buying senior forward Marshall Crum in today's show, as every show is brought to you by Westerville Automotive. Serving the Westerville area for 20 years, they have two locations on Westerville Road and in the Uptown area, just seconds away from Otterbein on Main Street. They're on the web at westervilleautomotive.com. You can follow them on Facebook at Westerville Automotive Uptown or call them at 614-890-6700. As we said, great show planned for you today. Coach Marshall, thanks for coming down to the studios and joining us. Otterbein coming off a pair of tough, albeit very different, types of losses this week to John Carroll and Baldwin Wallace at home. First, let's talk about that JCU game. The Cards suffer, suffer their worst defeat of the season, 107-67 to the Blue Streaks. Otterbein, 24 turnovers in that ball game. Coach, JCU is obviously famous for that press defense. Would you say it's the best Otterbein seen all year? Um, Yeah, you know what? It was. Uh, it, it, last week was a tough week for us. Um, you know, and John Carroll, John Carroll is a different style than than we're typically going against in practice, and it's hard to simulate uh, what they do with uh, with their press, with their big guys blocking shots, um, and and they kind of have a Kentucky style of five in, five out. So, with that kind of depth, um, with that kind of talent, and with us being a little bit nicked up but not being as deep as we could be, um, it was it was definitely. It was an eye opener for our guys, and you mentioned it in in the intro there that uh, you know it, it, they were two tough losses for very different reasons. And I got to hand it to our guys after that John Carroll game. Um, there were some things said in that locker room um, that really turned the tide, and 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 will make a difference for years to come. It will be it will it will not be forgotten um, by the coaching staff, and it will be our job to continually remind these guys of what happened that night, but more importantly, what happened afterwards. Uh, and then, you know, some of the success we saw on Saturday was, was definitely, um, you know, it started about uh, five minutes after that John Carroll loss. You talked about the success on Saturday. Let's move to that Baldwin Wallace game. Otterbein trailed the Yellow Jackets by three at half. They ended up by losing by three as well, 70 67. The lead changed hands nine times in that game. It came right down to the wire, tied at 67 with three seconds left. Matt Dennis makes a three point play for BW. Otterbein has a chance to tie the ball game up with a half court shot, but it's called for an over and back. Marshall, it's a really tough way to end what was a great basketball game, though. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was a lot of energy in that game. It was almost um, capital esque, uh, the feeling. Um, and we just wanted to come out there and, uh, like Coach Adrian said, try to bounce back from the John Carroll game. And I think we put a good product out there on the court. So. You finished with a season-high 14 points on 6 of 7 shooting from the field. You mentioned the crowd, a really nice crowd at the Reich Center, given all the recruits that were on campus. And Otterbein really seemed to feed off the energy of the fans, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, anytime uh, the lights are on, especially a big stage like that, uh, it's definitely uh, adrenaline-ridden the way we play it. Coach already talked about it a little bit, but after that JCU game, he told us Jake Phillips gave a frustrated, very fired-up speech to his team after the 40-point loss. How did that help motivate you guys for the BW game? Um, yeah, that, that very next day in practice, uh, we were just – we were almost rejuvenated because of that. Um, and for us to come out and have a good practice on Monday and another good practice on Tuesday uh, – I think that that talk really helped to motivate us just uh, to see not only Coach Adrian getting fi fired up, but uh, our very own teammate getting fired up too. Coach, the game was very costly for Otterbein, more than just losing the ball game. It's been the story all year, injuries. Mark McEwen goes down with look like a right knee injury in the first few minutes of the game. He misses the rest of the contest. Jake Phillips goes for a layup right before half, falls down hard, actually gets called for a charge on the play. He misses the entire second half. Can you give us any sort of update on their injury status? 
Well, it did look like Mark had uh, had messed his knee up. Um, l- luckily, if if it's if luck would have it that it's just an ankle injury, but uh, yeah, it won't be. It won't. It won't. It, it, that'll heal fine. Um, Jake, you know he's day to day right now. You know hitting the floor hard like that. They just want to make sure everything is uh, is is right with him. So. I don't know if we'll have him on Wednesday. I don't know if we'll have him on Saturday. But uh, just like in the second half of that game and, and, and really just like all year, uh, next man in mentality, I know uh, it worked pretty well for the uh, Buckeyes down the street. Um, and, and any coach that's put in the situation, it's really all you can do is uh, is try and prepare your guys the best you can, uh, you know, one through five, but six through 15 as well. You know, and Marshall right here was, uh, um, was, was a starter early and then, um, you know, had a little bit of a setback playing time wise and some other guys kind of jumped in front of him and then uh, you know he's kept working and and kind of rededicated himself on Friday uh, I don't know what why it was but uh, you know I asked him to observe the midnight rule for missed shots usually we observe midnight rules for you know losses and wins and try and move on and learn and, and come back at, with with the same kind of focus regardless of what happened the day before but um, at one point in practice I said miss miss them all today because after midnight tonight do whatever you have to do uh, but this team needs you to move forward and not miss any more shots and play like a senior. And, um, you know, I, I didn't realize that Mark was going to hurt his ankle when Marshall was going to play the rest of the way. But thankfully, whatever it is he did uh, and wherever he put his faith that night, um, it sure paid off the next day for us. I wish, I wish with the rededication, I don't know if it was as much rejuvenation as it was refocusing our guys on, because we've been playing hard. Um, we just hadn't been playing real focused and real dedicated to what we're trying to do as a team. Uh, and boy, did that change uh, with the game on Saturday. So uh, unfortunate for us not to come away with the win because I really thought we deserved it. Uh, and I don't really ever think I've seen a turnaround, 24-hour turnaround like I did with this team. Uh, but now, you know, I really believe that going into any game when we play with that kind of focus and intensity, we could beat anybody on our schedule. And frankly, that wasn't the case two weeks ago. Um, I knew that we didn't have what it took and our mindset wasn't the way that it needed to be. Uh, but sometimes, you know, especially with a young team, um, you know, with only two upperclassmen, you kind of have to let them f- fall down a little bit um, and be there when they're ready to be picked up. And that was definitely the case after John Carroll. So I'm really proud of the way they turned around. I wish I wish it would end up differently. But, you know, going forward, if we can maintain that that kind of intensity and focus and practice today, um, you know, it'll 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 make it uh, have a better chance to win tomorrow. You talk about that next man up mentality. Not only Marshall coming off the bench to play 25 minutes, scoring 14 points to uh, in replacing McEwen, but also Grant Finner making just his third start of the season, replacing Matt Hughes down low. He had a team high 16 and really seemed to shoot well from the floor. You had to be pleased with the way he played. Well, you know the thing about it is, is, is uh, it was when you have as many injuries as we have, it means you have some guys with experience that aren't necessarily starters. And Grant started 15 games for us last year, but as many of you might know, was out, you know, the first five weeks this season with a torn tendon. So um, to be able to bring Grant, quote, unquote, off the bench, uh, you know, is a blessing because he's really a starter. Uh, And that didn't surprise me at all. You know, he he probably was just getting back into shape around Christmas, and now he's getting his confidence back, and and he's been very consistent for his practice and games, I think, recently. So uh, it is fortunate to uh, to have guys like that. You know, and some of the other guys, you know, uh, Troy did a good job coming off the bench. Aaron Malley came in and played some meaningful minutes. Um, and those guys have been playing really good in our varsity reserve games lately. So when I look down the bench, uh, you know, would have loved to have Mark. But, uh, you know, I don't have a problem putting Marshall in and Troy in and, and all those guys because they've been working hard every day. And I think they're as ready as anybody. Marshall, the Yellow Jackets, the league's best three-point shooting team coming into that game. First half, they shoot 7 of 13 from behind the arc. Second half, just 1 of 10. What halftime adjustments did Otterbein make defending the three? Um, Well, before coaches even got into the locker room, we just talked about um, getting up in their grill and making them uncomfortable because uh, with the statistics that you just rattled off, it's not enough just to get a hand in their face. So... Um, we had to really try to make them uncomfortable and uh, try to run them off the three-point line. We'll take our first break of the show. When we return, Otterbein has some huge games this week at Wilmington and then the big one with that team down south. You're listening to the Todd Adrian Coaches Show with Coach Adrian and Marshall Crum here on 97.5 WOBN. We'll be right back after this. 
Hi, I'm LeVar Burton, and I'm proud to be a book person. How do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person, and if you're a book person too, read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition. Join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress, and the Ad Council. Hey, Cardinal fans, Otterbein Athletics on the Radio is brought to you in part by Westerville Automotive. Serving the Westerville area for 20 years, they have two locations on Westerville Road and in the Uptown area, just seconds away from Otterbein on Main Street. They're on the web at westervilleautomotive.com. You can follow them on Facebook at Westerville Automotive Uptown or call them at 614-890-6700. That's Westerville Automotive. This is head coach Todd Adrian, and you're listening to Cardinal Basketball on 97.5 WOBN Westerville, your source of Otterbein Athletics. There be many pirates that sail these seven seas. Barbosa, Blackbeard, Jack Sparrow. But there be only one pirate you need care about. The MC DJ MC. Every Thursday from 8 to 10, he sails for Pirate Radio on WOBN. Playing everything you want to hear on your college radio station, The Wild Card. Fewer than 5 out of 100 people give blood. Ever wonder why they do it? It's the one thing that we can do that we can always afford to do, and hey, you get a snack afterwards. So Snacks are great. I had never knew my blood type, and I found out in doing this that I'm O negative, so there's that added pressure knowing that everyone can use my blood at any time, and so I feel like uh, it's my responsibility. It's a little extra bragging power, too, knowing that you're a universal giver. Yeah, I'm pretty special. <laughs> Call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcrossblood.org to make an appointment today. I'm Drew Brees, and being a dad means the world to me. And one of the most important things any parent can do is make sure their kids get active at least 60 minutes each day. Studies show that physical activity not only helps kids stay healthy, it can enhance important skills like concentration and problem solving, which can improve academic performance. This means physical activity can help your kids in the most important game of all, life. Learn more at fitness.gov. Brought to you by HHS. Welcome back to the Todd Adrian Coaches Show here on 97.5 WOB, and I'm David Kinder in studio with us today, head basketball coach Todd Adrian and Otterbein's only senior on the team, forward Marshall Crum. Two big games for Otterbein this week, a road matchup with Wilmington this Wednesday, and then the big one, the 190th all-time meeting between Otterbein and Capital on the basketball court. Coach, when you look at both of these games, Wilmington 9-11, and 6-8 and eight in conference play. Capital just 5-16, and 3-11 and 11 in conference play. You have to figure there's still a chance for the OAC tournament if you can have success in this week right here. Well, like I said before the break, you know, I, I feel like um, if we can maintain our focus, uh, discipline, and intensity, we have a chance of beating anybody. Um, obviously, that, that means the team that we play next, whoever that might be, uh, again, especially where we are right now with our development. I'm just trying to get these guys um, to understand how important it is to prepare, uh, to understand how important it is to bring not just their energy, because we always have that. Uh, I think I think anybody that's watched us all year, I've never heard anybody say that we're not playing hard. Uh, the discussion has usually been around uh, how intelligently <laughs> we're playing or how focused we're playing or how much or, or, or we may not be playing as a team. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's uh, – uh, it's a couple of teams that um, you know that aren't competing for a championship. So on paper, obviously, you would think we'd have a better opportunity. We've beaten one of them, and we were ahead of the other um, for for some of the games. So uh, again, though, it's 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 every ball. It's how we handle handle every ball screen. It's how we convert every time. It's if we're running off the three point line, are we really playing with that kind of game point intensity? Um, you know, and I keep talking to this young team about. You know, not just worrying about how much, you know, energy or the music we're listening to or if my shot's on. It's more worrying about um, the things that we can control. Um, and, and when we handle those things, you know, take care of our business the way we're supposed to and, and sweat the details, 
uh, then we're going to have a great chance to be successful no matter who we're playing. Marshall coach just mentioned it. The first game this year with Wilmington at home, Otterbein lost 69-63. The Cards had a 10-point halftime lead, but Wilmington ended up only turning the ball over five times the entire game compared to 15 for Otterbein, and they get the six-point victory. What do you remember from that first game earlier this year about Otterbein's second-half struggles? Um, well, I just remember, uh, I forget his name, number 14. Uh, R.J. Leppard. R.J. Leppard. Uh, he came down to hit a couple – very clutch threes, um, and that was just like a, a dagger. Um, we came out of the locker room uh, up 10, as you said, and uh, I really think um, in the second half we took that lead for granted, and uh, and so we just we didn't play our best basketball that second half. Coach Wilmington is a team that's played very well at times this year. They beat a tough Mount Union team early in January and December, barely lost to the nation's number three Marietta Pioneers by just two points. What can you tell us that the Quakers do really well? Well, they have some veteran players, like we just mentioned, uh, R.J. Leppert. Um, when it was time to win the game at our place, he won the game for him. Uh, I don't know that it was necessarily anything that we um, did not do. Um, we were in a – we you know what? We want to we want to especially you know with with our inexperience if if we're in a game and we have have an opportunity to win it in the last four minutes, um, that's one of the goals that we have um, you know and then it comes down to a couple of shots and hats off to him, uh, but you know they're a seasoned group they've been uh, you know they were conference champions playing for championships the last couple of years, and these guys that maybe uh, you know they're juniors and seniors now maybe they weren't playing as much then some of them were but uh, you know in practice every day they were going against championship competition so. Um, in a couple of years when we get there and we have our freshmen and sophomores playing against a lot of juniors and seniors every day when it's their turn to step up um, they've already been doing it and, and they've made some mistakes they've done it in practice and so um, they're ready for it and I think you see that in uh, in some of these programs right now that um, you know have been established and just continue to play and and uh, they don't like talent uh, they like a little bit of size, and so one of the things they do is they try and press again. And if we can handle that pressure, um, you know that's going to turn into good offense for us. But more importantly, if we turn it over, that's going to turn into to quick offense for them. So uh, that's going to be a, a focus of ours again tonight. It was yesterday. We talked about it a little bit, watched some film, tried to save our legs uh, and our health. Um, but yeah, they're they're a good veteran team. Um, they do they they play well as a team. They have you know they have a, a scheme that that they execute and. Uh, it's 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 quite a bit different from what we do, uh, but that's what makes the games great. Um, just like the other night, the Baldwin Wallace, you know, 16 ties in that game and as many lead changes as you said. Uh, it could be another one of those games that comes right down to the wire, and it's a tough place for us to play. Um, I think they win a lot of games at home, so. Looking forward to this Saturday, the big matchup. The Cards will take on Capital at home. Otterbein beat Cap 77-72 the first time they played this year in Bexley. Marshall, this is going to be senior day at the Reich, but seeing as how you're the only senior on the team, it might as well be Marshall Crumb Day. So what kind of emotions do you think you're going to go through given this will be the last time you play at the Reich Center? Um, definitely bittersweet. Um, I can remember two and a half years ago, uh, giving Coach Adrian an email, asking him if I could come on and visit and uh, seeing what Otterbein's all about. So um, it just felt like this time has flown. Uh, it's, it's definitely been a great ride, and I'm definitely going to miss all the memories in the right. You mentioned you uh, didn't take the usual path getting here, transferring in. Uh, the first time you beat Capital earlier this year in Bexley, the first time you ever beat the Crusaders in your career. What does the Capital rivalry mean to you? Um... I mean, it's it, it's crazy, man. It's definitely the um, the most interesting game I've played in in my whole basketball career. Uh, the energy in the Reich is is second to none, um, and you just you just let your uh, talents take over, and uh, you just drive all off adrenaline. Coach uh, Marshall just mentioned the energy in the Reich. It must be nice going into the game knowing you it's going to be a sellout and you're going to be playing in front of a nice environment like you did against BW. It, you know, it's something unique to uh, to college basketball at any level. You know, I've likened it to having been in Allen Fieldhouse for, uh, I believe it was the mm, mid-'90s Missouri versus Kansas, winner-take-all, Big 8 championship, uh, packed house, getting offered $450 for our tickets walking in looking at each other look like no not worth it you know we, we want to be there uh and, and that and that jump ball 
uh, with Anthony Peeler um, on the other team, and it was it was just a war from from the tip. Um, but yet, I, I really think that I think the atmosphere in the Reich is better because Missouri only had about sixty fans there that day, um, and seventeen thousand and some were Kansas fans, which made it great for the Kansas players. Um, but there wasn't that back and forth. There wasn't that you know swing of momentum. Um, and when you have 3,500 people in the Reich and, and, you know, a full half, maybe, you know, a third to a half or 40 percent of them are, are fans from down south, uh, it definitely makes it it makes it unique. And I, I really don't know. Um, and I and, and after 20 years of coaching and, and 15 in college, Division three, I've never seen anything like it. And we've played in some pretty big rivalry games or coached in them. Um, but we're so close and the fans travel and there's such a true passion i'll use the word passion instead of the h word but a, pa- a passion for each school um that there are just not many guys and we and we talk about on the recruiting trail all the time you, you, there's nowhere else you can go um that you're going to get this kind of experience at the small college level and it's just it's just a great atmosphere and it really challenges us to play you know with emotion and 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 not on emotion um because you know when it gets intense like that and it's probably going to be another knockdown drag out game like it was down at their place and like it has been a number of times um it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to coach and it's a lot of fun to play in uh it's just a lot of fun to be a part of so you know i i couldn't be i couldn't be more excited about you know this week and obviously we have to take care of business tonight and practice and then tomorrow uh, when we travel um, but I'm looking forward to having all the, you know, all the students back in, in the Reich and, and all the fans and, that have supported Otterbein for so many years and, and, and make it such a special um, situation for us to be in. Passion. That's a good, uh, good way to put Passionate. it. Passionate. Uh, the win in early January over Capital, Otterbein's first win uh, for you, Coach, in the long rivalry and for you, Marshall, as well. What would it mean to go 2-0 against Capital, sweeping the seri- season series? Could that really put a positive spin on the season for the Cards? Oh, for sure. Um, a couple of the players said that'll be a success for us if we beat them twice. Um, and I know football beat them uh, this year, so uh, we're going for the clean sweep. Coach, uh, obviously Capital has Andrew Bolka down low, averaging a double-double in the past five games for the Crusaders. Besides him, what else should we look out for from Capital? Well, they're just well coached. They play good defense. Uh, they, they take care of the ball. Uh, they, have, they have guys that have been there, and they've played in this game before. Uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna rely on some guys that haven't necessarily played in this game as much as as we would like to have, um, but yeah, they're you know, disciplined talent. Uh, they've had some, they've had some close losses against good teams, um, you know, and they've had some pretty good wins this year too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you you expect I, th- I think our, our 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 programs are starting to mirror each other a little bit, uh, half court styles, um, good defensively, uh, you know, tough. Uh, so. You know, I think I think you know this year has been a pretty good telltale. Hopefully, Saturday's game is is good again. Um, but I think going on in the future, you know, it's going to end up being a a one or two possession game, um, kind of a, a rock 'em sock 'em, if you will, tough, um, you know, well played game from here on out. And so I think I think anybody that 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 comes to the Reich or or goes down to Bexley is going to get their money's worth uh, from now on when we when we play Capital. You can listen to both games right here on the Otter Mind Sports Radio Network. Tomorrow's game at Wilmington tips off at 7.30. Our pregame coverage starts at 7.15. Saturday, we will have all-day coverage at the Reich starting at 5 o'clock with pregame for the women's game, then pregame for the men's game starting immediately after the women's contest. Be sure not to miss it. When we return, college basketball mourns the loss of one of the greatest figures this weekend. When we come back, we'll talk with Coach Adrian and Marshall Crum about the passing of Dean Smith. You're listening to the Todd Adrian Coaches Show on 97.5 WOBN. We'll be right back. Hey, Westerville, did you know there is only one showcase on WOBN that features country music? I am talking about Campus Country. I'm here every Monday night at 8 playing the best country music. There's always time for country artist news, and on my show, you'll get to hear the newest songs and unreleased songs that you can't hear on those big stations. So tune into Campus Country every Monday night at 8 o'clock right here on your college radio station, 97.5 The Wild Card. WOBN 97.5 is your seat to Cardinal basketball this season. 
WOBN will have live coverage of 25 men's and women's basketball games. Be sure to tune in for the pregame show 15 minutes before tip-off and stay with us after the game for stats, analysis, and player and coach interviews. Check out WOBN.net for a complete broadcast schedule. This is Marshall Crum, senior four on your Otterbein basketball team, and you're listening to Cardinal Basketball on 97.5 WOBN, Westerville, Ohio, your source for Otterbein athletics. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a warm place on a cold I want to be day. A football I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Today is Saturday. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. A message from USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. This presentation of Otterbein Basketball on the radio is brought to you by our sponsors. Ohio Health, Roush Honda, BMI Federal Credit Union, and Westerville Automotive. I used to be one of those irresponsible guys, always goofing off and acting like a real jerk. Girls wouldn't give me the time of day. Hey, Julie, do you have the time? Shut up. Then, 30 days before my 18th birthday, I went down to my local post office and registered with Selective Service. Overnight. I became aware of the man I had suddenly become. Eligible for federal student loans, government jobs, and job training. Responsible and mature. Hi, Julie. Dinner tonight? I'd love to, Brad. So register with Selective Service. It's what a man's gotta do. And we welcome you back to the Todd Adrian Coaches Show. I'm David Kinder. Joining me in studio, head basketball coach Todd Adrian, senior forward Marshall Crum. It's time for the final segment of the show where we talk about what else is going on in college basketball. On Saturday, college basketball lost one of its great icons in Dean Smith at the age of 83. Coach Smith coached North Carolina from 1961 to 1997, winning two national titles. He desegregated Tar Heel basketball, and when he retired, had 879 wins, most in basketball history. Coach uh, Coach uh, Smith, being a Kansas guy, I know you have strong ties to the state of Kansas and the Jayhawks. Uh, Dean Smith played at KU in the early 50s, started his coaching career there as an assistant coach. I know you had a great deal of respect for him. Yeah, you know, he's uh, uh, he's an icon of the game, and, and, and it's been amazing the things that you didn't know that he changed about the game. Um, everything from, you know, the guys on, on the bench standing up and clapping and, and, and giving each other high fives when they come off to – uh, you know, to, to run the Carolina break, to, um, you know, pointing point at the guy that, you know, telling him nice pass. Those kind of things are all, you know, just, I mean, just the tip of the iceberg of how many things he revolutionized about the game and, and the way that he cared about his players and they cared about him. Uh, you know, it's an inspiration to, to, to a lot of coaches, um, you know, to try to follow in his footsteps. And, and uh, you know, my former father-in-law was, uh, was a little bit older and he actually remembered – Dean as a young boy um, when he went to Emporia High he played for Dean's dad Scratchy Smith as they always called him because he was quite a golfer um, Dean was was their ball boy so um, yeah so it was I've heard a lot of stories um, about Dean Smith before he was even playing basketball and and it doesn't surprise me to know that his dad was a very successful coach I think at Emporia High um, most of his career uh, and, and that you know his son followed in his footsteps and became you know, obviously the the coaching legend that he was, and and uh, yeah, it, it's a sad day. Um, you know, when he when 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 you lose he and a John Wooden, um, for instance, uh, guys that have had had had, had such a um, such a major players in in college basketball and the lives of so many young people. Um, yeah, it, it's it's sad, but it, but it is kind of nice also at the same time when he passes. You know. A lot of things about him that a lot of people didn't know um, are now celebrated and, and, and truly appreciated. Marshall, Coach Dean Smith, so much more than just a basketball coach, a social social pioneer for civil rights and one of the sport's most respected men, obviously. How are you going to remember Coach Smith? Um, 
well, obviously I didn't live in his air uh, when he was coaching, but I just hear about uh, um, just like Michael Jordan talking about him and uh, Coach K from Duke talking about him and um, just how he – I heard a stat how he um, graduated the upper party 90% um, of his uh, players. And to hear just different things like that, for them to talk about somebody – uh, the way that they did, uh, he has to be a great guy and a great coach. The game of college basketball will certainly miss Dean Smith and, indeed, the entire world. Coach Marshall, thanks for taking time to join us on this week's show. Uh, we certainly appreciate it, and we'll see you tomorrow in Wilmington. Absolutely. Thank and we you. invite you to join us tomorrow for live coverage as the Cardinals battle the Quakers. Tip-off at 7.30. Our pregame coverage can be heard right here at 7.15. Myself and Jeff Murtaugh will have the call. For Coach Adrian and Marshall Crum, this is David Kinder saying so long. We'll talk to you tomorrow.